So welcome to my channel. Um, I want to do something a little bit different uh, with the video this time around. Behind the scenes of me on a shoot. I have spent some time with Porsche over the weekend on a shoot. Um, you don't need a lot of money or equipment to do car photography. I'm sure you've all seen the channels online. You've all seen um, different people doing different shoots. But in particular, um, light painting. Something that's completely unique outside what you would do with traditional uh, studio lights or different strobes. Um, uh, the ice stick or the ice wand. There's one by Young New uh, as well. Um, Godox do one as well, a light, a light wand. And they're expensive. You know, they're from £70 up to about 150 200 quid for the top of the rear ones, like the Gordox ones, stuff like that. And the brilliant lights, I'm not denying that, but the majority of amateur photographers or people starting off aren't going to be able to afford that kind of output. When you bear in mind you've got to get a camera, you've got to get lenses, batteries, memory cards, camera bags, stands, all sorts of kit like that. Um, so for this shoot, um, I used the bare essentials. So basically, I have my, my Nikon camera with a 17 to 55 2.8 lens. I had a light or a torch um, which cost me six quid. It's an ever ready LED torch you can get from B&M. Um, just to kind of prove a point, you don't need a ridiculously expensive light to be able to do this. The other things I used, I had some Godox triggers. Um, what I mean by the triggers is instead of using the triggers to trigger a light, which is what you'd normally do, this is why you do the way around. So I have a trigger wired into my Nikon camera. Um, and then I use the main trigger itself to trigger the camera. So you're not touching the camera, you're not moving the camera, anything like that. You've got the light in your hand, you don't have to go back and forward to the camera. Um, and basically when you're ready, you press the button, it takes the shot, you go around like a lunatic with the light, paint the car, get a number of shots together, and then it's composited in Photoshop at a later point. So, six pound light, Nikon light, Nikon camera, which I already had anywhere. Um, so I've got some video behind the scenes, bear with it because it is pitch black, it's up past 11 at night. So it is dark but you can still see me running around like a lunatic with a torch. Um, so there's a little bit of behind the scenes footage there showing me running about. And then I'll do some footage on Photoshop just to show you the images I've took, how the layers fall, go together to create like the finished image. And then obviously you'll see a finished shot um, towards the end of the video. Couple of tips for you. When you're doing light painting, ideally, put the camera on manual. The reason for that is that if you're using the autofocus on your camera and you're pressing the button down to take a shot, either the autofocus is going to struggle, especially on night, or the autofocus is going to focus slightly different to a shot previously, which means your photos will be slightly different, they'll be a little bit different on the vocal length, so when you come to stack the layers together, you're going to have a problem getting them to line up because effectively it's, it's the focus point is slightly different from each photo. So, focus it on manual. How do you do that? Get a colleague or somebody with you at the time. In my case, my daughter came out for the run out. So she held the torch, the light on the car. I focused the camera manually so I knew the wheels were in focus. At which point I left the camera as is. I had the f-stop on, I varied between f11 and f22. And I had the shutter, tar shutter set on 10 second exposure. So 10 second exposure, F11 to F22. Other than that, it's a case of running around the car, doing shots. Now, when you're doing the cars, a couple of other little tips as well. After you, the obvious ones to do, like down the side of the body of the car, across the roof, things like that, the stuff that you would automatically think about. But don't forget things like the car tyres, so that the tyres can be visible. The wheels. Details like the brake calibers, um, details like the exhausts on the car and the bottom part of the car and the tyres there. If it's at the front of the car, the grille details and stuff like that. So think about the car as a whole overall, but then think about the details that's going to make the shot up to give you more options on the creative side of things once you get things into Photoshop and you become start to combine the layers together. Once you've done that, you've got all the different shots. There are two types of lighting with light painting. There's hard light and there's soft light. The difference between the two, if you've got the light fairly close to the car and you move across the length of the car, that is when you'll get the light trails that you've seen on other photos. You get a light white trail going along the body or a white trail over the shape of the car or whatever it might be. So that's hard light. You're close to the car 
with the light itself. Soft light, you're moving up to several feet away, two to three feet away from the car. And what you're using is using the softer light to light the car up. So you get a much more softer, uh, more even illumination. But you don't pick up the light trails on the bodywork as much. So once you've done the full length shots and you've gone all the way down the length of the car with the light, take time to stand back a little bit, hold the light still on the back of the car, the front of the car, the roof, the middle of the car, low part of the car. That'll give you the even light shots for the bodywork. Then the close-up stuff will give you the light trails that you want to add in at a later point during post-production, depending on what you want to do. Hopefully these tips will help you guys out. It'll point in the right direction. Um, but like I said, you don't need to spend a fortune on lighting. I used a six pound LED torch, and like I said, I got it from B&M. It's made by a brand called Everready. It's about that big. It's got a little LED strip in the middle, and it runs off four AA batteries. Simple as that, it couldn't be any easier. But don't forget, put the camera on manual to get the best results. So there are, there's a grey metallic GT Porsche and there's a like orangey red. So out of this shot I came away with two side shots and a rear shot um, which I'll take you through and, and show you some of the layers and stuff like that. So from this point we're going to go on to Photoshop, I'm going to take you through some of the layers that make the image up and then obviously I'll show you the, the finished result. Okay this is uh, the image I was telling you about on the video. So. I'm just going to go through some of the layers, show you how I built the image up. Um, but this is the original, the base image that I took with a quick pass of the light going down the bodywork. Um, there are multiple layers in this, as you can see on the right hand side, to build this image up. Um, this is just using layers, you're brushing what you want, take out what you don't, and so on. So the next layer is just cleaning up the car. So just show you that again, there's loads of little reflections all over the bodywork and stuff that I didn't want. And if you do it on the base layer, you can always take it out on other layers, knowing that the car underneath has been cleaned up. So that's a clean up layer. The next one is where I've gone along the bottom of the car. So you can see again, on and off, so it's lighting up the bottom half of the car, the wheels. So there's loads of fine detail there. The next layer is a more aggressive layer so there's more reflections over the rear wheel arch which i quite like um, it lights up the wheels really well um, so again you can see there so there's there's two versions there i mean i quite like that image there because it's quite dark it's quite moody the advantage with these layers you can get multiple images from one shoot just by taking or adding the layers once you've got the full composite done so that one would make a really nice image in its own right I wanted to do one that's a little bit more aggressive with the light painting panels as you can see. Um, that layer there had a stripe, it didn't quite go all the way across the car, it looked better going all the way over, so fill that in there. Then again on this layer, this is doing detail on the rear arch as you can see and the rear wheel. So on and off. And again the next layer on here is detail across the top of the car and also the arch, so I've done the arch near the rear, rear wheel, that's the main detail I wanted off that particular image. Um, also additional light over the top of the roof, over the ceiling line as you can see there, so just putting that on and off. And then just going up the other layers. This layer is the front, so again it's capturing the front detail as well. And again additional reflections there on the front of the car. Then this layer is primarily the windscreen and also the interior so again a shot that's often missed is people do the car they don't do the more details but they completely forget about the interior and it's just a case of holding the strip light on the windscreen shining the light into the car moving it around a bit so that you can pick up that detail in regards to the the seats and the interior and the steering wheel and stuff like that i mean obviously later on this shot i'm actually going to take the windows out in the background but the next one you've got roof line so this is where I've gone across the roof line, so again take it off, turn it on, so you can see how I'm building the image up to create an image I want. Obviously some of these other shots I might put up 
with not as many of the light layers on so it's a little bit dark a little bit more moody but this one i wanted to be quite a strong um in your face kind of photo if you will uh, the next layer again is additional work on the bonnet as you can see and uh, the front windscreen getting the reflection just right so again that's back on there and then the final layer on on this particular image is the front again it's quite easy to miss that detail but you've got a really nice front grille on the car there as well um, so that's all the layers that build this image up uh, I didn't really want to keep the the background so even though there's a glow going around the top of the car which I know the background isn't being kept in this particular image I might go back later on uh, and draw back in some of the detail in the building and stuff and leave the the you know the the dealership if you will or the showroom and everything in the background I, I've not really made my mind up fully yet but that's the main layers on, on on that particular shot so just coming back to the shot this is a second image with layers on this is like the final one so all I've done here effectively is I've knocked the background out as you can see so again it's just drawing the reflections out it's tidying up the lines it's cleaning things up it's taken odd bits of colour cast away, there's still a little bit of dirt on the car and things that I needed to clean up during post. And then the final layer is the back that the light's taken out, so there's a bit of light change around the back of the car as you can see. The windows themselves have been taken out, the reflection's been cleaned up. Also the ground has been cleaned up a little bit more as well. And again, just a little tweak on the contrast and the sharpness, and this is the final image that... Um, I'm happy with um, there are different variations to the image as well which I'll also go through with you so just going through the final images so this is the final one after all the retouch and everything is done uh, in regards to how I wanted it like I said I might do one with the, the dealership and the building in the background at a later point but at the moment this is the main image I was after the second variation is the same image the only difference is the the blue the bluey grey is quite strong so I basically put a desaturation layer over the top and put it about 50% opacity just to take that blueness off the colour but still leave a subtle bit of colour in there as well obviously singling out the lights and the Porsche logo and everything like that and then the final image I've done is the black and white as well um, I've always liked black and white I think black and white sometimes in a car looks better than colour I think the colour can take your eye away from the actual shot sometimes and this is all off a, a light painting shoot where the torch it costs just over six, six pound it's just getting out there and being creative and pushing yourself to to do the work and do the images in the first place if you do that anybody really with a bit of time can come up with results like this and hopefully this inspires you to get out there and try this um, and see what you come up with and what you create Other than that, um, if you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't like the video, thumbs down. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon at the top so when you upload new videos, you're aware of new content as it's been published. Um, I can't grow this channel without your support. Um, any questions or anything like that, by all means ask in the comments below. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. There's also links to some of the equipment that I use, um, about the setup and the equipment used and stuff like that. But other than that, stay competent, stay creative, and above all else, have fun. Thank you.